listen to this. This is very important. That their mister is a little white bullet shaped sensor. Um, and what happens is, is this their mister, it sits on the evaporator coil and it sends resistance back to the board. Now, it gets its resistance based off of the temperature. Let's, let's, let's look at that. If you guys don't know how to read a thermistor chart, today's the class for you. We're gonna discuss that. Bear with me. Okay. What does the thermistor do and, 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 and how do you test it? I'm gonna show you right now. Bear with me, guys. Okay, here's your temperature thermistor chart. Basically, when they put the thermistor on the evaporator, guys, please, this is very important. Please get this. This is if you get this, you're you're leaps and bounds ahead of your competitors. Trust me, you, your troubleshooting will go to another level. Please, please pay attention to this. When you check your thermistors, you use the charts to make your conclusions. What you do is you take your infrared gun and you point it at that temperature sensor and you get a temperature of it. Now you take a few readings, you know, it may say zero, it may say one, it may say five, you know, and then you go for the median, somewhere like in between what your temperatures are giving you in that vicinity. Once you have that, then you come over here to the chart. So let me see who's paying attention. If you arrive, okay, but well, before I, I, I test you guys, let's look at this chart though, what it means. Basically, you see three rows, temperature, that sign is ohms and volts. Basically, what they're telling you that at 29.2 degrees Fahrenheit, you should have resistance of about 64K. And the board should have an output voltage of 4.326. And I'll show you how to do that at a later time. But for now, we just want to understand how can a board like this determine when a refrigerator goes into defrost? It accomplishes that through the thermistor. The thermistor acts in this technology as the old style by metal. They would just open and close. Now with this guy, the thermistor sends resistance back to the board and that's the board interprets it as temperature and it puts out a voltage to that thermistor. So if the temperature was 27.4 deg negative, 27.4 degrees Fahrenheit, you should have a resistance of 61,012 ohms with 4.296 volts DC, DC. Not AC, DC, okay? Thermistors operate on DC voltage. This is crucial stuff. I hope you're writing this down. So let's see who's paying attention. Here's a pop quiz. If you're checking the thermistor and the thermistor is at 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit, what should the ohms be? Again, if it's at 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit, what should the ohms be? Sure. 23,345 ohms. Okay, who answered that? Jonas. Okay, thank you, Jonas. Correct. Put your microphone on mute. I'm going to ask again to somebody else. If the refrigerator is at negative 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit, what should the ohms read on that thermistor? 32,230 ohms. That's it's negative 0.4. Negative 29,350. 29, Correct. Not negative 4. Negative 0.4. Okay. Oh, okay. Who, who answered that? Negative 0.4. 
Somebody answered it correctly, though. I didn't get their name. I did, Cedric. 15. Good job, Cedric. Cedric, Cedric put, your, put, your, put your thing on mute, Cedric. Okay, I'm going to ask again. Don't answer if you've answered already. I want everybody to learn this. If the unit is at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, what should the ohms be? 32 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. 13,290. Good job, Trinity. Mute your microphone. Yeah. Has anybody else not answered? Yes. Okay, you're next, buddy. Who am I speaking to? Fortunato. Hey, Fortunato, how you doing, man? All right, so I got a question for you. If the unit is at negative 18.4 degrees Fahrenheit, what should the ohms read? 21. No, I'm going to say it again. Negative 18.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Negative, okay? Yes. Negative 18.4. Yeah, it will be 47. There you go. 47 what? K. 47K. All right, I'm going to give you another one because I, I want one more from you. If the unit has a reading of 41 degrees Fahrenheit, what should your thermistors read in ohms? 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't see that on the chart. The chart, if you look at it, right, the first, oh, yeah. the first, yeah, the first column is temperatures, but they're in order. They're starting at negative thirty, but if you keep looking, the temperatures eventually start rising and they go positive. They go from negative to positive. So follow it till you get to forty-one. And what should forty-one degrees be? Coming up, coming up, it will be 10K. 10K, good job. All right, guys, I'm proud of you guys. You guys are leaps and bounds ahead of your competitors. Let me say one thing, though. You cannot use a Samsung thermistor chart across the board for everything, all right? They all have different temperature charts. Let's look at a Whirlpool thermistor chart, okay? Just for, just for reference purposes, before we leave, let's look at 32 degrees for a Samsung. It's about 13K ohms. Everybody see that? 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 13K ohms. Let, when you go to the par house and you hear guys say, oh, all thermistors are interchangeable, uh -uh. let's look at a Whirlpool thermistor Good point. chart. Good point. Okay? Whirlpool their mister chart boom and let's see what a whirlpool is at images right here bear with me guys let's open it up it's loading Ready to grow your appliance repair company? Introducing AMJ Marketing, available throughout the USA and Canada. In as little as 24 hours, you can add up to 10 customers to your schedule daily. Stop paying for shared leads and beat out your competitors by locking down a service area of your choice and getting all the calls from that area straight to your phone. Never pay for non-relevant and non-targeted calls. No sign-up fees, website fees, management fees, or any hidden fees. Fill out a web form on our website to claim your territory today and start receiving customers as early as tomorrow. Bring in revenue before having to pay anything. Sign up at www.amj-marketing.com forward slash TMM. This is Samurai's website. Okay, shout out to my to Samurai. That's, that guy's the greatest. All right, guys, this is a whirlpool. Now, unmute your phones, and I want somebody to answer me on whirlpools. For Mr. Chart reading, what is thirty-two degrees read on a whirlpool? Eighty-nine. Good job, Laron. 
excellent job. So look at the difference. And then if we go to Frigidaire, it's another difference. And then if we go to, I don't know, name me a, name me a, a, a company, Bosch, they're different. So the misters don't just plug and play to everything, okay? So again, I tried showing you an electric schematic reading and I'll get one in the next class because we're not done with this. We'll probably go over defrost one more time, but I feel like we covered a lot today. But just, just to recap today, let's go back to the beginning. Refrigerators have two cycles. Either they're cooling or they're on defrost. Everybody agree with me on that. When they're on old school technology, they use the defrost by metal. I'm sorry, the defrost timer. Like we showed you in the picture, the defrost timer has a motor. Tick, 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 tick. After eight hours, it stops. For 30 minutes, it goes into defrost. We went into the ADC and we discussed how that goes into defrost. How many times the door opened? When was the last defrost cycle? And you know, and they use their method because it's energy efficient to determine when the unit should go into defrost cycle. Everybody with me on that one? That's the second style. Then we spoke of the third, which is your standard board in most refrigerators. That what these boards use is these boards use thermistors to regulate when and when not the unit should go into defrost. We, di we discussed how to at least read a chart on how to get your continuity to check if your thermistor is reading proper continuity, sending that information back to the board. That's a lot that we discussed today. I, does anybody have any questions? Please, now's the time. Yes, I got a question, Brandon. Yes. Uh, so, when that's the, probably the first thing you check as far as the last one you talked about, the electronic board type, would check you at the MISTA first and yeah. make sure that reading is right, and then from there to the board. Right? Hold on, brother. I'm I'm putting my screen so I can see you. Say that one more time. So if you're having a if you're checking a fridge, right, and it's having a defrost problem. Yes, sir. That would probably that would probably be the one of the first thing you would go to would be the thermistor to make sure oh. it's operating correctly. No. The first thing I would do is determine what style of, of defrost system I'm working with. And here's why. Because if it's a standard timer. Like I said earlier, I'm not even going to entertain the diagnostic. I'm going to get there, realize that it's timer-based, and I'm just changing the timer and the bimetal, and I'm done. I'm out the door. It's as simple as that. If it's I'm safe, talking about the board type, let, the oh, last one we just ah, talked about. Ah, that's a good question, my friend. Well, then in that case, what I do is when I discover that I have a defrost failure, what I do is I know that in – I know my schematic, and I know that in the defrost – ADC, they use the technology board, bimetal, defrost heater. And then I know if it's the newer style where it's just a board, I know that it's the thermistor that it could be. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that was so, the last one. Okay, well, when that's, my, when that's my situation, what I do is the following. I go to the board and I look at the unit schematics. And what I do is, uh, let's look, let's do one together. I need a model number for, for a refrigerator. Okay, here's we go. G, this is a model number of, they may have that G, C, 3, N, H, A, X. Let's see what that gives us. Wiring sheet. Oh yeah, this got everything we need. Beautiful. Oh, the universe is beautiful. She's a beauty. She she didn't deny me these schematics and I wanted, this was the one I was trying to show you guys. Let me use a highlighter so I can make sense of this. Uh, I 
think it's called Sketch or something. I want to I want to use a uh, right here. By the way, I like the shirt. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. Trying to trying to make us handsome appliance repair men, you know, look presentable and and have gear of our own. All right, hold on, guys. Let me let me get you this. Okay, so I have to press logo Windows logo key Shift S. Okay, Windows logo key Shift S. Okay, let's see what this does. Windows logo key Shift S. What does that do? Yep, it works. You guys can see my screen. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to. Okay. Guys, this is a good training right here we're going to do. Okay, we're going to utilize this area. And then I'm going to draw on this picture. How the hell did I draw on it now? Where did it go? Damn it. All right, can you guys see my mouse? No. No, I cannot see it. Okay. Do you guys see here on the left where it says electronic control? No. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get this right. Hold on, guys. Bear with me. If not, we're not gonna. This ain't gonna work. Hold on, because I gotta show you guys this schematic reading. I can only see you. I can't see nothing else. Okay. 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 Bear with me. Bear with me, guys. Share screen. Okay. Share. Okay. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes. All right. Now, now, I could draw too. Let's see if this works. There you go. You guys see that red lines? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's let's erase them. Okay, now let's trace this schematic, okay? To answer Laurent's question, Brandon, what do you do when you got these new style and they got the, the boards in them? Well, what I do is I go right to the board and I come here to where it says thermistor. Now, in this case, this one is kind of a hybrid because it uses a thermistor and it uses a bimetal. But what, uh -huh. I, care, what I care about the most in this entire system is why is my unit not defrosting? So what I look for, I come right here to the most important thing in this entire circuit, and that's that. Can you guys see that? Defrosting heater. And, and I say to myself, that is the thing that's gonna get all of that snow off. I look at that first. And then when I look at that, I trace backwards and say, What's in this, what, what makes this tick? And I look, is it this? Or is it a thermistor? In this case, it's a bimetal. So if I have a defrost failure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the back of that board. I'm going to take the panel off and I'm going to get my voltmeter. And with one lead, I'm going to trace my defrost. Well, I'm going to trace my, my, my bimetal. So I'm going to come, let me cho choose, let me delete this. And let me do a little drawing. Red will represent L1, blue will represent neutral. I will check my bimetal like so. I will go to this board and I will put one, one of my leads in pink. Number four, I would take another one of my uh, leads and I would go to uh -huh. number seven, brown. Mind you, I would disconnect this though from the board and the refrigerator would be off, okay? So I would disconnect those plugs. I would disconnect plug number four and I would disconnect plug number seven. I will put my voltmeter in it. And what that would do is, that would tell me if my bimetal is open or closed. Now let's see who's paying attention today. If you arrive to a unit and that thing is covered in ice, 
Should the bimetal be open or closed? Closed. Who agrees with, who disagrees with him? Anybody disagree with him? <laughs> okay, he's correct. It will be closed. And do you know why it will be closed? Let's use voltage as color yellow. What happens is voltage wants to get to this defrost heater. Let's erase that. Yes. Voltage, voltage wants to get here to this heater. Yes. But if this bimetal is it's open, open. Yeah. guess what happens? The voltage will want to travel up. It will want to go this way. And it will get here and nothing. It can't, it can't continue the path. Everybody yes. with me? Yes. Now, here's another trick question. That would be an open circuit where it won't be able to travel. That's correct, Laurent. Okay. Running a service business can get crazy sometimes. Keeping up with the appointment schedule, staying in touch with your staff out in the field, and the amount of invoices and reports to keep on top of is definitely tough. Luckily, there's Workies. Workies makes scheduling, invoicing, and keeping track of your work easy. You can schedule work in seconds. Just add a job, assign it to a tech, and send. You can even communicate in real time with your team out in the field. Workies streamlines your income as well. You can invoice clients and charge credit cards. Workies can even calculate complex employee commissions for you and eliminate all that paperwork. And because it's 100% cloud-based, it's always mobile, so you can do everything from just about everywhere. It's the most simple and efficient way to run your service business. Sign up today for your 14-day free trial. Excellent. Excellent job, Laurent. Now I'm going to ask you guys another trick question. If you get to a unit and it's open, is it necessarily the bimetal or the defrost heater? Now say that again. Okay. Yeah, say that. Let's say rather than because we got two choices here. We can test the, 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 the heater alone, or we can test the bimetal alone. Yeah. Or we can test them both in series. Do you guys understand how that's possible? Yes. Does anybody not understand how that's possible? For those that don't understand, I'll say it's simple. Look, let's say we want to test the bimetal. Well, we'll come mm -hmm. here, and what we'll do is, like we said earlier, we'll check pink to, br to brown, right? But let's say we want to check the defrost heater. Let's use a different color. What we would do to check the defrost heater we would go brown, same, same, same plug, but rather we would look for the white, which would be, and that would give us our defrost heater. Does everybody see that? Yes. And guys, please. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. I'm moving too fast. Stop me, okay? I'm now, let's say you want to test them in series. Anybody, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a challenge. Does anybody know how to test that in series? Pop quiz. It's possible. Okay, if you're going to do it in series, then you're going to have to test um, pink and white. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on. Oh, no, don't doubt yourself. You said it right. Why did he say yeah, that? Pink and white. Why did he say that? Let's look at it. Maybe he's crazy. Maybe he's right. Let's see. Let's, again, blue is, red is L1. Let's see how that's possible. Let's follow L1 right to the heater. Comes in from the wall. Energizes the board. Okay? Now, this board doesn't mean it has 120 yet. So let's see where this board gets its neutral from. Let's use blue to represent neutral. That's where the unit gets its 120 volts. And if you notice, this little connector, which is one and three, you notice that 
they're in the same molex connector together. So that right there is how this board gets 120. Well, that don't mean nothing. How does the defrost heater get 120? Well, what happens is, again, L1 comes out of the board that had 120 volts delivered, and it comes up through here, and it travels through here. Then it travels through here, then it goes here. Now it loses all of its load. It, it, it dumps off all of the voltage onto the load. But where does the neutral come out of? Well, let's use blue again. Where neutral will come out of will be white to right here. Right here, this cable is the same as this cable going back to white. Does everybody see that? I don't hear nobody. I'm losing you. I'm scared. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Come on, yes. All right. So to go back to my initial question, to answer Laron, what I would do, brother, is first I would see where's my defrost heater. After locating my defrost heater, what's behind it? If it's a thermistor, we discussed how to use thermistor charts to test. So for today's class example, Let's, let's make a pretend. Let's say rather than the bimetal being in series with the defrost heater, let's say that the defrost heater was alone. And let's say that the defrost heater used the thermistor and a board to turn it on. Well, down here, let's use some new, let's get rid of this and let's use some new colors. Down here are our thermistors, but these are our cabinet thermistors. Here's the one that goes in the freezer. And here's the one, here's L1 and here's neutral. So what I would do is I will, if, if, if for just pretend purposes, if this unit was that Samsung that we looked at earlier and it had those temperature sensors, I would disconnect that pin, which is tan and white and orange, the, the colors that I used over here. Can you guys see where I'm, where I'm referring to? Mm -hmm. And I would use that chart. I would use my temperature gun. I will point to the thermistor. I will go over to the chart and say, how much ohms should this give me? It would tell me I would disconnect the, the plug at the board. Here's the board. I would disconnect the plug. The plug's now in my hand. I will get my voltmeter and I will put it into the plug. In this case, seven and one, tan, white, orange, where I have the arrow pointing, and I would use continuity, I'm sorry, ohms. I would put my, my voltmeter on ohms, and based off of what my temperature gun or my thermostat or whatever device, uh, me, uh, measure, uh, temperature measuring device I decide to use, I would use that in addition to the scale to get my resistance, and I would, collect, I would put my voltmeter into that, connector which is seven and one and that would tell me the resistance now they also made mention of voltage dc voltage dc well to check that you got to put the plug back in plug the unit back in go to your voltmeter put it on dc and with the plug plugged in to the board and the unit running you have to take a live test measurement and that would give you something like five volts dc or whatever the the chart says but you collect your voltage with the unit running and with the plug plugged in and then you collect your continuity with the unit plugged out with the you with your molex disconnected from the board am i making sense to you guys here am i losing anybody you make Good. sense Perfect. Good, good stuff. So basically, you can check everything from the board except for the temperature of the thermistor. And for that, we would open the door, and me, yes, I would use my look, guys. And you know, you all have seen me from the beginning of me doing YouTube to now and to class. What is the coincidence that I just decided to do merchandise and? It's literally to live by the gun and die by the gun because we really use that. 
to use our our readings. It's a serious thing. Hey, brother Jimmy, thank you for joining class. You came in a little late. It's about to finish, but thanks for joining. Again, we use our temperature gun to get our thermistor readings to go back to the board to measure both volts. For more content, please check out tmmacademics.com. Please show support to our site by signing up to our monthly Patreon, and please check out our merchandise.